Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. I'm a self-taught Squarespace website designer, and nowadays I teach people like you how to create and customize their Squarespace websites. In this video, I wanted to teach you how you can customize your site way beyond your design menu with a very cool thing called CSS. In this video, I'll be teaching you what CSS is, how it works with Squarespace, and I'll share some examples that you can try to modify your own website. I created a little guide to go along with this class. Check the links below to grab a copy of that PDF so you can follow along. Now let's start at the very beginning here. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet, and it's a language that a computer browser like Chrome or Safari or Firefox uses to understand how to display the content of a website. Without CSS, I could just have a picture on my website and it could show up like this, or it could show up like this. CSS is what tells the computer, hey, when you see this image, make it this wide and this tall and give it this border. That's what CSS can do. When you make changes to the site styles menu in Squarespace, like changing the color or updating a font, Squarespace creates this CSS file for you. So CSS already exists on your Squarespace website. But what we can do as Squarespace designers, we can actually modify that code by adding our own. Because it's a cascading style sheet, it will always take that last value and update the content to match it. So if we add our CSS at the very end and say, hey, go ahead and make this button this color, the browser will pay attention to our code instead. Pretty cool, right? Now, something you need to know right out of the gate is that CSS will not break your website. All it does is change the style. It does not change the way a website works. It cannot change the function of anything. CSS can't calculate something like a countdown timer. It can't take someone to a page if they click on something or take any type of action. All CSS does is change the way that things are displayed on your website. It's in the name. It changes the style. Cascading style sheet. So that's why it's amazing to work with Squarespace. If you type CSS code into Squarespace and it does not look the way you want it to, you just remove it. Everything goes back to the way it was before. We can't edit the main style sheet that Squarespace creates from our design menu. All we're doing is adding stuff to the end of it. That's what makes it a great language to use in Squarespace to make all kinds of changes so your site is extra unique. Now here's the cool thing about using CSS in Squarespace. Squarespace gives everything a code name. If you want to use fancy technical terms, we can call it the selector. Now for this example, I have an image right here. And let's say I want to give this image a border. I can say SQS block image, that's the code name, and then I can say border 5px solid red. I want a border that's five pixels in width around that image, make it a solid line and make it red. And it'll look like this. But here's the trick. The browser is going to read that selector or that code name and it'll say anytime I see an image, I'm going to give an image that border. That can be a good thing if you do want all of your images to add this border, or maybe you want all of the read more links on your blog to have a border. You can use that same selector to change everything. But if all you want to do is change just one image, you can do that in Squarespace. Squarespace gives every content block a block ID. And if you add that at the beginning of your code, it says, hey, browser, when you see this block, if you find this image in it, give it this border. Pretty cool, right? It's just a really creative way of speaking the same language that a computer is speaking. That's all we're doing with CSS. So here's another example for you, thinking about those blog links. Here I have a blog page on my website and I have my read more link at the bottom. Well, what if I wanna make that look like a button? I wanna give it a background and a border and I can use the selector or the code name blog more link. And then I can say, here's a background, here's a border. And anytime the browser sees a link for the read more option on my blog, it'll make sure it looks like a button. It'll have that CSS. So a quick recap, CSS changes the way things look. It changes the style of your Squarespace website. It doesn't change the way things work. It won't adjust the function. It's not going to break anything. If you don't like the way it looks, remove your code and try again. Everything in Squarespace has a unique selector and everything in Squarespace has its own block ID. 
So that's an easy way to narrow down your code. If you only want to change one specific thing, start your code with the block ID. So we talked about selectors. Let's do just a little bit more technical speak in case you find someone else's tutorial and they talk about things in a lot more of a complicated way than a self-taught gal does. So you have a selector that's blog more link in this example, and then you have a property and a value. The property is what about it you want to change. In this example, we wanted to change the border and we wanted to change the background. Those are properties. Now what you want to change it to, that's the value. So for the border, we said 5px solid red. And for the background, we said pink. That is the value. So again, you have a selector, a property, and a value. And you have a CSS code. Now I've got one more pro tip for you before I send you off to work on some practice exercises on your own website. And that is a very important thing to share. Literally, the word important. If you add a code to your Squarespace site and you don't see the change that it should make, try adding exclamation point important after the value for that code. And I'll tell you why. Because Squarespace creates a CSS file based on our design menu, sometimes the browser gets a little picky. Chrome will load your site and it'll say, hey, you already told me that the background for that's supposed to be blue, and now you're telling me it's this color, and it gets confused. And we have to say, no, 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 browser, this is important. So we label it exclamation point important. Going back to our blog more link, we had two different values there. We gave it a border and a background. I would want to add important to that twice if neither one of those changed. Now, if something does change on your site, you don't need important. The browser read your code and it picked that one instead. So that's great. Only use important when you add something to your site with CSS and you don't see the change happen that should. Give that a try. Make sure the browser pays attention to your code by labeling it important. You'll find more troubleshooting tips inside the guide that I created to go with this video lesson. Inside that guide, I also have a few other practice codes for you to try on your site. And beneath this video, you'll find additional tutorials to help you get started. I hope you found this overview helpful, kind of a quick breakdown of CSS, and I hope that you're a lot less intimidated by trying code. It's something that I taught myself how to do, and I am confident that any Squarespacer out there can be an amazing custom code creator if they give it a try. Thanks for sticking around and checking out this video. Be sure to grab that guide linked in the description below, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website.